great to be here and, and I will try to tell you a bit about, you know, I think everyone and what this whole conference is all about is, you know, this automation and what we need to do and I think uh, I will try to give you kind of an insight into what we have seen and, and what's happening on our journey into this. Uh, for those of you that doesn't know us, we are the international arm of the incumbents in the Nordics uh, and are practically and have only really focused on the carrier services as, and the internet services and, and currently about 59% of the global internet is behind us. So that's really where we have grown. But of course, when, when a lot of things in the world are changing, and especially driven by the, the names of the companies you see here, there's a lot of things we need to do as well to adapt to this. You know, we can't just continue to be who we are. We also need to change the way we operate to live up to the expectations of, of the new world, and especially in the enterprise service space where cloud is coming in and a lot of other things are coming in. So basically what we see is there's a lot of new trends out there that we absolutely need to adhere to and, and adapt to. And, and of course, the, the biggest one is that an enterprise before practically had all their servers in their own basement at the headquarters. Now they don't. Now everything is going to be in the cloud, and that is, of course, a huge change to their network, hence a big change to our networks. Uh, we need to have this scalability everywhere. Uh, and especially the, the sort of this, you know, uh, the enterprise world, we've always been used to these three to five year agreements. That's more been to the sort of operator side to safeguard investments and so on. I think people want more flexible solutions. They want to change. If they're not happy after one year, they want to get out of that and they want to change. And, and if everything is in the cloud and easier, then of course things are going to change much quicker and we need to adapt to that. We need to be, be sure that someone can change that quickly and so on. And of course, in the end, you know, no one really wants to see the network behind. They just want to self-serve. And all of this is, of course, putting a lot of pressure on us. Uh, how uh, the world that we come from, the carrier world, is extremely commoditized. And you know, how, to, how can we do anything in this world to stand out? What is it that we can do uh, that others can't do? Of course, everyone in our world are buying the same gear from the same companies. So of course, there's a lot of things in there. But there, there are certain things we can do. And that's practical what I'm, what I'm, what I'm going to talk about today and what do we do here. So, uh, if we look at our journey, uh, our company, we have built some systems ourselves, we've used some other systems, but in practice we've been extremely manual. And, and you can be re really manual in the, the old carrier world when you know someone orders you 20 wavelengths between A and B, it's not that hard to be manual to, to do that. But of course, if everything is going to change, cloud is going to come into play, sd Vaughn, all of this on top of that, a lot of more new sites, then of course we also realize that we need to be a lot more automated. And that's the journey what, that I'm going to talk about and that we have started now and, and that's going to change a lot of things uh, on what we do on our side. And of course, you know, uh, coming from the carrier world, this is the budget that we're used to having every year. Practically all of our capex we spend goes into network growth. We buy more equipment to grow the network to serve the customers. Very, very little money can be spent on other things like IT systems and all that stuff. So of course, having this as a boundary for what we can do is of course quite tough, you know. We can't spend too much money on, on buying very expensive things. Okay, so when we looked at ourselves and, and we felt, you know, okay, uh, and this is a super simplified picture of, of the network and everything, but every time when we started to think about, you know, okay, if we're going to be this fantastic automated company in the future, what is it that we absolutely need to fix first? What's the most important thing? And I think we came to the conclusion that having an accurate inventory system, that is a must. If we're going to do self-serve, of course we need to have control of what we have. And traditionally, you know all about telcos. If you had 60% accuracy in your inventory, you felt pretty okay a number of years ago. That is, of course, not okay today. Now we need to have control of everything we, we do and, and so on. So, of course, this is also why we said, you know, okay, let's, let's really start with, uh, with the inventory. Uh, and if you look at... This is the sort of discussions we had. You know, we, we had an inventory that we'd built ourselves, but it was built in 1998. It was 100% manual. Uh, you entered what you had, and if you didn't enter it, it didn't exist. Uh, worked 
for us. If you have really skilled manual people, it can work. But we kind of understood that's, that's not the way to go forward. Uh, okay, can we buy something off the shelf? Is there anything? And, and there's a lot of companies out here that have great products and everything, but we always felt, you know, and, and, and as you can see, uh, this is a slide showing that we have had internal presentations from people, from IT departments, saying, you know, let's start this now. Uh, and as you can see, we've tried a number of times. Uh, and, and we've never really gone anywhere. Uh, so basically, where we always ended up falling short here is, of course, that the cost of us buying off the shelf is quite, it's quite high. Uh, license fees and everything, but the capex to buy a system, and then we always, always felt, you know, even if we buy this system, we probably need to make some changes to the system, change some things in the system, and in the end, hmm, is it that off-the-shelf product that we dream about, or is it that we have to live with our own upgrades and everything in that? So basically, that one has stopped us from starting that project, also remembering the budget limitations we had and so on. The other thing is, of course, that we've never really had the competence. We had an IT department who were absolutely really good on putting pressure on our suppliers. But in, if, they, if you really don't know yourself what we are supposed to do, then how can you put pressure on someone else? Uh, and we always also said, you know, okay, if I'm going to tell someone else to build this system for me, mm, it's probably not going to end up the way I want that system. So we felt, you know, we didn't have the people to do it and, and we didn't really have the budgets to do it. So then oh, we're back again. Uh, and what do we do then? Uh, so a year ago, we absolutely decided, to, okay, let's do this. Let's build the system ourselves. Uh, we are the only one that really knows what we want. And, and, and then we sat down and, okay, what is it that we're lacking? Why haven't we done this before? What is it that we need to do this? And really came to the conclusion is, the right people. We haven't had the right people. Uh, these are hard to come by. Uh, a lot of companies are fighting for these type of resources. But we really went out and said, you know, come and join us on this fantastic journey. Let's build systems ourselves that we believe will be tailor-made for the business we're doing. Uh, and at the same time, with the thinking of, you know, this system is going to live for many, many years. We can't just build something that's going to be perfect today. It has to be super flexible and all that stuff. Uh, we're in the middle of that journey right now. Hopefully something can be launched before Christmas this year. Uh, there are versions of this out. We have done trials. We are testing. Uh, obviously, uh, building something yourself is, is very scary. I've had numerous companies in our office saying, you know, you're idiots. Uh, you will come to us in a year's time and ask us to help you. Uh, so far, it's going well. Uh, but we kind of felt, you know, the only way for us to survive and be flexible in us is, is really to do it ourselves. Uh, let's see how it goes. Hopefully I can be here on the stage next year, say it went perfect uh, and everything is good. But let's see. Okay, uh, inventory system is not the only thing we do. We try to do a lot of other things as well and I'm trying to show you some real world examples of what's going on and, and, and what we need to do. And of course, uh, you've heard of the NSO tool, the, the tail F system that Cisco bought and then turned into NSO. Great tool have nothing against the tool, it's it really cool. We went and said, you know, okay, we, we need this to be much more automated. We need, you know, we can't have people sitting and configuring routers all the time. They can do manual mistakes, it takes too long time, it costs too much money. So we said, you know, let's go with this, let's go with this tool. But <laughs> we believe we bought this, but in the end, we had to change practically every system we had. Uh, and this is also one of the learnings that ended up with us no, we need to build the inventory system ourselves. We can never get this system to work properly unless we have control of everything else. The NSO tool, great, works perfect. It's, it's in there right now, but it took so much more effort than we thought in the beginning when we felt, you know, let's buy this tool. It looks very simple, but, you know, if something is going to change a lot of factors and, and things in your network, you need to realize that this is going to have an effect on so many other systems. So that's kind of a one learning that we had. Another thing that we work a lot of about around right now is, of course, that uh, the, the network itself is, is streaming enormous amounts of data out of it. Uh, this is something we've never really uh, used before. We've always looked at alarms, and when alarms are red, that's not good. You need to do something. But if they're not red, hopefully it works and so on. But of course, uh, streaming telemetry and all that stuff 
gives you fantastic opportunity these days to start to do a lot of things with your network that you couldn't do before. Uh, not only looking at the customer data and the flow of that data to realize, you know, this customer probably needs to be connected to that network and so on, and you can give that type of insight to customers. But there are so many other things happening in the network. There's so many other flows in the network, so many other things that comes out of the network. So basically, we have now quite a number of people that sit uh, in our office and, and really look into this, you know, how can, we, how can we use this data in a much, much smarter way? We also went to the university in Stockholm uh, and we asked them, you know, do you guys have anything for us? Is there anything we can do together? Uh, we found a company called Mavenoid and, and we decided, you know, okay, is there anything we can do together? And we realized that uh, AI is something that they're doing uh, and we said, you know, okay, we, we get quite a lot of phone calls, we get a lot of emails, we get a lot of information from customers to us about, you know, this doesn't work, this works good, this worked very strange last week. So what we've done is we've started to collect all that data and together with them created something that is spitting out information to our people in the front uh, saying, you, know, okay, now we see this, the likelihood of this being the failure is 93%. And at least we can then give customers, when they call us, we can say, you know, to a 93% degree, we can say, this is the problem. Uh, and of course, more information makes the 93 go to 94, go to 95. So this is something that we are looking into very much to see if we can learn from, our, from the information we receive and then give a better educated guess when someone says, you know, something is not working. Uh, this is not sort of deep learning or anything. It's, it's just using the data we have, but it's a good step for us to learn how we can do this more. Another thing we've done uh, on our own uh, to test a few things, and, and right now we're doing it together with some other companies because we, is, is to look at the data from, from one of the parts of our network, you know. Uh, if we can stream that data and look at the, the cards in that part of our network and see, you know, can we look at the data from the cards and try to find out when a card fails, what happened before that? And based on that information, calculate when the next time another card will fail. Uh, we've done this a few, we've done this sort of on, on, on a six month piece, and we actually detected a few card failures. There were other card failures we didn't detect, so it's not perfect at all. And I would say the biggest failure so far of this is, of course, the sample size. We don't have enough sample size to do this. Uh, it kind of means that we don't have enough failures in the network to look at, which is good, <laughs> of course. Uh, but, you know, we need to do this. So what we've done now is we've contacted a number of our uh, kind of competitors, suppliers, partners, competitors. Uh, you know, everyone is a competitor to everyone in the carrier world. And we've asked them, you know, if you put your things together and we put our things together, the sample size is going to be much bigger. And let's see if we can start to find out a way to detect failures before failures occur. Uh, this, of course, only on the component side in, in parts of the network. But, of course, over time, this is something we want to do everywhere. And, and, of course, this has also brought us into this journey of uh, machine learning, uh, you need to start small. You need to start to learn somewhere. Uh, we have tried to figure out what do we need to do and, and, and how, what are the steps in here and so on and how much time and effort do you need to spend here. But that's something that we are uh, spending quite a lot of time on right now and, and of course trying to engage with others in the industry to get the sample size much bigger. Uh, if we together with someone else can start to detect failures that would be just great, and of course, in the end, hopefully we can find some, some ways around this. Another thing that we've done is also that, uh, and, and something that's been really good, you know, most of you probably use the click tool uh, to show and visualize your data and, and a lot of things. Uh, what we did immediately in our company was to make this available to practically everyone in our company. You know, we're, we're, we're only 500 people in our company, so we, we're not that many people but we're trying to make everyone interested in data, uh, trying to learn from data. So what we have said is, okay, everyone gets an account here, everyone can go in here, and everyone can actually do their own reports in the system. And that has actually turned out really well, because if everyone leaves the report they're doing here, others can take on and see, you know, wow, he could see that. Maybe I can use this for something else. Uh, so right now we have 
enormous amounts of data spitting out in various shapes and forms from kind of der derived by our employees who's like, you know, okay, I found this here. This looks very funny. Uh, if we show this to this customer over here, maybe we can learn them a few things on how they can use these services much better. And we can also see, you know, okay, now we have had this incident a few times on this part of the network and so on. So there are a lot of things you can do in here, but, but just by not only having our IT department running this, we actually gave it to everyone. Uh, and of course, quite a number of people are not interested. They just want to come to work in the morning, deliver what they're supposed to deliver, and then go home. But we are trying to attract people in our company to be more interested in data. I think that's the only way for us to survive, really, and, and ask them to, to do more. So this has been a, a, a quite big success for us as well. Uh, but of course, we, um, it might sound that we're trying to do everything ourselves, and, uh, and of course we are not. Uh, There's so many things where we need partners. Uh, a number of companies out here uh, today will, of course, be part of our ecosystem. We cannot do everything, and I think the, over the last couple of days here, we've talked about the ecosystem, and for us, of course, the ecosystem is extremely important as well. Uh, we have found parts of the piece that we do that we feel we need to do ourselves, but for most other pieces we need to be with partners. Uh, and only if you want to do a perfect delivery to an enterprise customer or someone else, uh, you can't do it yourself. You know, there are security parts that we can't do at all. We need partners for, uh, you know, the sd solution. We will not do that ourselves. We will use partners for that. And there are other things, you know. So, uh, of course, we, we're not going to do this alone. Uh, we need a lot of partners. And I think the ecosystem is extremely important. I think all of us in this operator business need to look at our ecosystems to see, you know, okay, what, what is it that I'm doing good and what is it that I'm, that I'm not doing good at all and I need someone else to do for me. So, uh, a summary, really, then. Uh, this cloud thing is really transforming anything. But it's also transforming the way we need to do things. Of course, we're using cloud services ourselves and, and, and so on, of course. But the way we need to adapt to running our network is something that is really shaped from, from everything you know, moving into the cloud instead of being the way it was before. So that's a big, big thing. And then we also realized that the right people, the only thing you can really change is the mindset of the people and having the right people. And that has been a big change for us. When going from an IT department of five people telling a lot of underlying suppliers what they're supposed to do and code into having a department of, of 20, 30 people that can do all the coding themselves. That has been a major, major change for us. We, of course, still need IT partners. We can't do everything ourselves. But if we have people who can do the work to tell other people how to do the work, it's so much more easy. You know what you expect, and you can sort of get what you expect. That's been a major change for us. Uh, and then, of course, you know, in the end, you need to sell and, and find the right options for you uh, based, on, based on all these things. It's, it's, you know, you can't do everything yourself. You need to find the places where you need to get help from someone else. Uh, but these are, are really the learnings from from us, and I, I hope I get, at least gave you a few insights into what we're doing. It's a big journey, we're not there. Uh, last week, our head of IT sent out an email to everyone saying, you know, these are the projects we're working on. Uh, when you see that list, you're like, whoops, uh, that's a lot. Uh, can we really do all of them? Uh, hopefully we can, and hopefully in a year we can be here and talk more about even more things we've done and, and learned from. So, thank you very much. That's the end of my presentation.